I stared in disbelief at the woman standing on my doorstep, suitcase in hand. Eloise, what are you doing here? My mother-in-law brushed past me without an invitation. Well, aren't you going to let me in, dear? I've come to help with the baby. Help? I repeated dumbly. My protests were drowned out by the sound of my husband's voice. Mom, what a wonderful surprise. Dean hurried over and enveloped Eloise in a hug. I watched the scene unfold with rising panic. This couldn't be happening. Eloise was now disentangling herself from Dean's embrace, tutting loudly. Honestly, you two? This place is a mess. Have either of you lifted a finger to prepare for the baby? Before I could respond, Dean jumped in. You're right, Mom. We've been swamped with work. It'll be a huge help having you here. My mouth dropped open. A help? Dean, we never discussed this. He shot me an apologetic glance. Babe, don't be like that. My mom just wants what's best for us. Eloise nodded vigorously. Of course, dear. A new mother needs guidance, after all. Her eyes bored into mine with thinly veiled disdain. I felt something inside me shrivel. This was exactly how it started with Jillian, Dean's sister. Eloise had swept in after Jillian's first child, running roughshod over every boundary until a bitter rift formed. Now she had her sights set on sinking her claws into my family, too. I don't need any guidance, I bit out. We're doing just fine on our own. Dean's brow furrowed in that familiar stubborn line. Don't be rude, Corinne. My mom is trying to help. Yes, I am. Eloise looped her arm through Dean's in a practiced motion. But if my support isn't wanted, I understand. Her gaze slid to me, eyes glistening with artificial hurt. I clenched my jaw, fury warring with desperation. I knew how this game ended. If I held my ground, I'd be the vilified one, the ungrateful daughter-in-law who shamed her devoted husband by rejecting his loving mother's overtures. When Dean's pleading expression joined the fray, I felt the last of my resistance crumble. Fine, I gritted out. She can stay. Eloise's smile was a rictus of false warmth. Thank you, dear, I'll try not to be a burden. I caught the gleam of triumph in her eyes and felt the first cold tendrils of dread uncurling in my heart. By allowing Eloise across the threshold, I'd granted her a foothold, and I had the terrible feeling she wouldn't relinquish it without one hell of a fight. True to her word, Eloise was indeed a burden from the moment she arrived. Within days, she had critiqued everything from my housekeeping to my wardrobe. Really, Corinne, you're going to wear that? It does nothing for your figure. She clicked her tongue in disapproval as I pulled on a loose maternity top. Dean, ever the peacekeeper, tried to intervene. Mom, lay off? Corinne looks great. But Eloise merely waved him off. Of course you'd say that, dear. But a mother needs to speak some hard truths sometimes. Her eyes bored into me again with that familiar disdain. I bit back the urge to snap at her, knowing it would only make me the vilified one in Dean's eyes. I felt the old anger and hurt churning in my gut, the same volatile stew I'd fought so hard not to inflict on my own mother. The final insult came a few days later, when I caught Eloise clearing out space in the nursery closet. "'What are you doing?' I demanded, my tenuous hold on civility fraying. Eloise didn't even turn around. "'Just making room for a few necessities, dear. You can't raise a baby in this pigsty.' White, hot fury propelled me forward until I was right behind her. Those are my things! You can't just throw them out! Oh! Eloise arched one perfectly groomed brow. And where, pray tell, were you planning to put the changing table? The crib? This tiny space can barely fit the basics. We were going to move the changing table into the bedroom, I growled through gritted teeth. S Eloise tutted again that same infuriating noise. Don't be ridiculous. You'll both need your rest. Keeping the baby in your room will only lead to squabbling and sleep deprivation. It's our baby. The words burst from me like shrapnel. We'll raise it how we see fit. In an instant, Eloise's expression shifted from feigned concern to cold disdain. Is that so? From where I'm standing, you're the one acting like a child, dear. My hands clenched into fists, barely resisting the urge to lash out physically. Before I could retort, the sound of Dean's footsteps reached my ears. I watched helplessly as Eloise smoothed her face into a mask of serene innocence. When Dean entered, I fought to keep my composure. Your mother is throwing out our things. What? Dean's gaze swiveled between us, plainly bewildered. Mom, what's going on? Nothing, sweetie. Eloise was the picture of aggrieved gentility. I was merely trying to make some space. 
but if Corinne would rather the baby sleep in squalor. That's not what I said. I could hear the shrillness in my own voice. Dean held up his hands in a placating gesture. Hey, let's all just take it easy, okay? The sickly sweet smile was back as Eloise laid a hand on his arm. Of course, honey, you know I only want what's best for you both. In that moment, I saw it all too clearly. Her maddening gaslighting, her manipulation of Dean's emotions to undermine me. Her flagrant disrespect for any boundaries I tried to set. This was why Jillian's family had cut ties. And if I didn't do something soon, Eloise would drive the same explosive wedge into my own marriage. A few days later, I escaped to my friend Maya's house, needing a break from the suffocating tension. I just don't know what to do, I vented as soon as she opened the door. Eloise is driving me crazy. She questions everything I do, oversteps every boundary. Maya ushered me inside, her expression one of sympathy. That's awful, Corinne. Why don't you just kick her out? I've tried. I sank onto her sofa with a groan. But Dean refuses to see how toxic she is. He's completely under her spell. Shaking her head, Maya sat beside me. Men can be so oblivious when it comes to their mothers. Have you tried talking to him again? Yeah, and it's always the same thing. She means well, Corinne. Don't be so hard on her. I threw up my hands in frustration. Meanwhile, Eloise acts like a sweet little angel whenever he's around. That manipulative witch, Maya muttered. I nodded miserably. Exactly. And the worst part is, she's already turning this pregnancy into a total nightmare. Can you believe she invited people over for some stupid baby prep party without even asking me? Maya's eyes widened. She didn't. Oh, she did. My jaw clenched at the memory. Just barged into the kitchen, announcing it like it was a done deal. I've invited the Hendersons and the Wilsons to come over this Saturday to help get things ready. Maya shook her head slowly. That's a major violation of privacy, not to mention safety concerns with strangers in your home. Tell me about it, I laughed bitterly. When I tried protesting, Eloise turned it around like I was the rude one, putting up roadblocks instead of embracing the village that was coming together for us. That's insane. Maya's eyes flashed with anger. She can't just appropriate your pregnancy like that. According to her, she absolutely can. When Dean backed her up on it, I trailed off, feeling defeated all over again. Maya's hand found mine, giving it a comforting squeeze. Hey, you can't let her get away with steamrolling you like this. That's exactly what she wants. Her words struck a chord. Eloise did want to dominate me, to usurp control over every aspect of my life under the guise of helping. Anger flared in my chest, burning away the hopelessness. You're right, I said, jaw set with new determination. I can't just roll over for her insanity. Enough is enough. Maya grinned fiercely. That's the, so what's the plan? A hundred possibilities flickered through my mind, each more outrageous than the last. But one in particular made me pause. A half-formed scheme taking root. Actually, I said slowly, I might have an idea. A few days after my visit with Maya, the final straw came in the form of a shattered vase. I returned home from running errands to find Eloise rummaging through my closet again. Clothes and shoes were strewn everywhere. What the hell is going on here? I demanded, hands clenching into fists. Eloise didn't even turn around. Such language, Corinne. Hardly befitting for a mother. Befitting? I echoed, anger making my voice tremble. How about basic privacy and respect? That got her attention. Eloise swiveled to face me, mouth pinched in displeasure. Don't be so dramatic, dear. I was merely trying to clear out some space. By destroying my closet? Those are my things. Clutter and chaos, more like, she sniffed disdainfully. You'll thank me once the nursery is ready. Something inside me snapped at her sheer entitlement. Get out, I bit out through gritted teeth. Get out of my house right now. Eloise's eyes went wide with unconvincing hurt. Corinne, surely you don't mean— I mean it, I overrode her sharply. You've overstayed any welcome you might have had. Pack your things and leave. For a moment, she seemed taken aback by my vehemence. But her recovery was swift, lips curling into a disdainful smile. You poor, deluded girl. You honestly believe you have any authority here? Her tone was laced with patronizing pity. This is my son's home, and whether you like it or not, I'll always have a place in it. White-hot fury lanced through me. Before I could retort, the sound of shattering glass rent the air as my foot knocked over a vase. 
Eloise's hand flew to her mouth in theatrical dismay. You clumsy child, those were antique Venetian, you foolish girl. I opened my mouth, any remaining respect I'd harbored for this woman withering on my tongue. But it was Dean's voice that cut through the tension. What's going on? I heard a crash. He took in the scene with bewildered eyes, the clothes strewn everywhere, my flushed cheeks, Eloise's look of carefully crafted dismay. Before I could say a word, she pounced. Oh, sweetie, it was simply dreadful. I was only trying to help organize a bit, and Corinne just flew into a rage. What? I choked out. That's not shattered that priceless vase your grandmother left me in a fit of uncontrolled temper. Eloise went on, tears welling artfully in her eyes. I did not. I turned desperately to Dean. She was going through my things again without permission. But the damage was done. Dean's expression was a kaleidoscope of conflicting emotions, disappointment, anger, hurt, all directed at me. That's enough, he said lowly. We'll discuss this later. Mom, why don't you go lie down? With a tremulous sob, Eloise nodded and exited the room. I was left alone with Dean, suddenly bone-weary under the weight of his stony glare. Well, he prompted after a stilted silence. What do you have to say for yourself? I opened my mouth, a thousand recriminations on my tongue. But in that moment I knew no defense would be enough to sway him. Dean was too entrenched in his blind support of his mother. My shoulders sagged in defeat. What was the point of fighting a war I couldn't win? That night, as I lay awake in bed, the first flickers of another strategy began taking shape. If shouting matches and explosive confrontations failed, perhaps a more subtle approach was needed. Eloise wanted to undermine me? Well, two could play at that game. Only this time I'd strike with stealth and cunning rather than blunt force. After all, she'd taught me well in the art of deception and revenge. The next morning I awoke with a newfound sense of purpose. As Eloise swept into the kitchen, serene as ever, I forced a placating smile. Good morning. I'm so sorry about my outburst yesterday. The pregnancy hormones, you know. I let out a self-deprecating chuckle. Eloise's eyes narrowed fractionally before she smoothed her features. Well, I certainly understand how unsettling this transition can be, dear. Exactly. I nodded in agreement. Which is why I'm so grateful to have your guidance. You're absolutely right. I need to start nesting and embrace the village rallying around us. Her smugness was palpable, suspicion forgotten. I'm pleased you've finally come to your senses. Over the next few days, I played the part of the reformed compliant daughter-in-law to perfection. When Eloise criticized my cleaning methods, I listened meekly. As she reorganized the house to her liking, I uttered not a word of protest. All the while, I began piecing together my real plan. The first step was contacting Jillian, Dean's estranged sister. Though our relationship was strained due to Eloise's meddling, she proved a wellspring of information about our mother-in-law's past manipulations. I've got boxes of evidence, Jillian confided when we met for coffee. Emails, texts, you name it, all documenting the cruel, underhanded ways Mom drove a wedge between me and my husband until he couldn't take it anymore. I listened with equal parts horror and vindication as she recounted dozens of instances just like the ones I'd endured, only far worse. Next, I began stockpiling my own proof. Each time Eloise bounded a line, I hit record on my phone to capture the rants and diatribes when Dean wasn't present, her feigned politeness giving way to biting derision and judgment. Who does she think she is, contradicting me like that? She fumed after one argument about baby supplies. She's worse than a child, at least children still mind their elders. Through it all, I maintained my facade of humbleness and compliance. Let Eloise have her shallow victory for now. She could swan around playing the martyr, the voice of reason, right up until her own actions undid her. The final piece fell into place when Maya helped me get in touch with two other daughters-in-law who'd been driven apart from their families by Eloise's poisonous influence. Sarah and I used to be so close, Patty lamented, but after our first big fight, which Mom masterfully instigated, she went running straight into her arms for support. I never stood a chance against that emotional blackmail. Their anecdotes were eerily similar. Seeds of discord planted, allegiances divided, families torn asunder. All through Eloise's insidious machinations. By the time I hung up the phone that night, my path was clear. If this was the only way to wrest back control, 
to protect my family from the toxicity Eloise represented, then so be it. The next morning at breakfast, I was all sugary smiles as Eloise breezed in. I've been thinking, I began lightly. With the baby's arrival getting closer, I really want to clear the air, do something to bring everyone together again as a family. Eloise paused mid-sip of coffee, intrigued by my uncharacteristic olive branch. Oh, what did you have in mind, dear? My lips curved into a smile that held no warmth. A family dinner, actually. I think it's time we all had a long, overdue discussion about the future. The night of the family dinner, I was near vibrating with nervous anticipation. Despite my outward calm, it took every ounce of effort to keep my hands from shaking as I set the table. Right on schedule, the doorbell rang. I pulled open the door to find Jillian shifting awkwardly on the front step, her husband Rick beside her. Thanks for coming, I murmured, ushering them inside. Jillian's expression was tight, her gaze flicking around like a trapped animal. You're sure about this, Corinne? Before I could respond, Maya arrived with Patty and Sarah in tow. A chorus of startled greetings filled the air as Eloise swept in from the kitchen. Well, what an unexpected reunion. Her eyes danced between the assembled families, mouth curved in a politically bland smile. How lovely to have you all here. The calculated pleasantry grated, threatening my hard-won composure. I could see Jillian tense beside me, no doubt reading the same insincerity. Thankfully, Dean chose that moment to join us. Hey, everyone's here. Should we get started? I forced a bright smile. Actually, I thought we could wait for the final guests to arrive. Right on cue, the doorbell rang again. This time it was the Conway family, former in-laws who had cut ties with Eloise over a decade ago after an epic blowout regarding their grandchildren. Complete silence reigned as Eloise registered their presence, a muscle twitching in her artificially smooth cheek. Judith, Thomas, how unexpected. Judith offered a tight smile that didn't reach her eyes. Really, Eloise? After all you've put our family through, you can't fathom why we're here. For the first time, I detected a flicker of unease in Eloise's perfectly cultivated mask, but her recovery was as swift as ever the sickly sweet smile reappearing. Now, now, let's not let old grudges spoil the evening. Cut the crap, Mom, Jillian suddenly burst out. All eyes swiveled her way as she took an unconscious step forward. We're not falling for your gaslighting routine again. Eloise's expression shuddered, eyes glinting with cold fury despite the saccharine tone. Jillian, darling, whatever are you? You manipulative lying witch. It was Patty who exploded next all her grievances bubbling over. You destroyed my relationship with Sarah just like you tried with these others. The room erupted into a maelstrom of shouting voices, accusations flying, tempers flaring, decades of bitterness and pain unleashed. Through it all, Eloise stood ramrod straight, eyes blazing, veneer of civility disintegrating. At some point, Dean's voice cut through the chaos. Enough! What the hell is going on here? An eerie hush followed his bellow. I could see the stunned hurt writ across his features as the reality of the situation dawned. My mouth was dry as chalk, but I knew this was the moment. Reaching into my pocket, I pulled out my phone and met Eloise's gaze steadily. You might want to have a seat for this. The first recording began to play, anger and condescension dripping from Eloise's tinny voice as she ranted about me. Then another file, more vicious put-downs and criticisms, and another after that the damning evidence piling up one after another. Eloise paled, seemingly struck dumb. Dean's expression morphed from disbelief to stunned hurt to white-hot rage, as each new vileness issuing from his mother's lips assailed him. By the time the final recording clicked off, a profound silence had fallen over the room. I could see it all clicking into place for Dean, the missing puzzle pieces, the half-sensed deceptions. Finally he turned to Eloise, face like chiseled stone. Get out! Her mouth worked soundlessly as she struggled to find her footing. Sweetheart, you don't understand. I said get out! Dean's roar made us all flinch. I want you gone, Mom, tonight. To her credit, Eloise didn't argue further. Shoulders slumped in rare defeat. Like she turned and walked out of the dining room, out of our lives. Only then did the euphoric chatter and embraces erupt around me. But all I could feel was the searing ball of hatred still burning in my belly, despite my victory. Because as satisfying as her downfall was, I knew it was only the beginning of making her pay. 
A tense silence fell over the dining room after Eloise's abrupt exit. I could sense the weight of a thousand unspoken questions, accusations, and recriminations hanging in the air between Dean and the assembled families. Judith Conway was the first to break it. Dean, I know this is a shock, but your mother's behavior. Don't. Dean's voice was little more than a ragged croak as he held up a hand. Just don't. He dragged his palm down his face, suddenly looking decades older. When his eyes finally lifted to meet mine, they were haunted. You knew. About all of this, this vindictiveness, the cruelty. It wasn't quite an accusation. More a pleading for context, for something to make sense of the shattered reality before him. I swallowed hard against the surge of bitterness that welled in my throat. How many times had I tried explaining, only to be brushed aside? But righteous anger would only push him further away now. I suspected for a while, I admitted quietly. But I could never get through to you, Dean. Eloise was always able to gaslight me, twist the reality to make me seem irrational. He flinched slightly at her name, then sank heavily into a dining chair. The wariness emanating from him was a physical force. So that's why you brought everyone here. Rick broke the stilted silence, realization dawning. To gang up and force the truth. I opened my mouth to protest the callous phrasing, but Patty jumped in quickly. Not gang up, she said firmly. Corinne had to take drastic steps because of how thoroughly Eloise isolated us all, divided and conquered to maintain control. A dull flush crept up Dean's neck as he digested her words. I could practically see the pieces clicking into place, memories and long-buried doubts resurfacing to be viewed under a new, but unerringly honest light. Jillian reached across the table, placing a tentative hand over his. I didn't want to believe it at first, either. Not about Mom. Her lips twisted in a rueful approximation of a smile, but her awfulness became impossible to ignore after a while. Dean's jaw clenched hard, eyes glistening with shame, anger, a kaleidoscope of volatile emotions. When he spoke again, the words emerged muffled, as if forced between gritted teeth. All this time? The horrible things she said about you. His haunted gaze found mine again, as the gravity of his betrayal seemed to crash over him in waves. While I just stood by and let her, a pregnant pause lingered as the hurt, the accusation remained unspoken. In that moment, I could have lashed out, unleashed the full fury of my spite and grievances upon him. But something in his ravaged expression stayed my tongue. Because as righteous as my anger burned, his anguish ran equally deep. My husband had been gaslit, masterfully manipulated by a toxic parent, just like the others in this room. His world had been upended as thoroughly as mine once was, so instead of dealing further blows, I rose and crossed to where he sat, slumped. Ignoring the other's questioning stares, I reached out and drew his head against my stomach, cradling him against the swell of my pregnancy. "'It's going to be okay,' I murmured, feeling his ragged breaths against my abdomen. "'We're going to be okay.' Dean stiffened for a moment, then seemed to melt into my embrace like a marionette with its strings cut. I stroked his hair lightly as his shoulders began to shake with silent sobs, offering him this rare shelter and solace. This was a new beginning, I realized, one built on a foundation of brutal truth, but truth nonetheless. Whatever came next, we would face it together as partners rather than adversaries. The cycle of toxicity and deception was broken. That night, as we fell into an exhausted sleep tangled in each other's arms, I understood the true cost of vengeance was not violence or hatred, but mercy. Mercy hard won and bestowed upon the humbled. Only then could the past be laid to rest, making way for a brighter future. In the weeks after Eloise's banishment, an uneasy calm descended over our household. Dean and I walked on eggshells around each other, both still processing the cataclysmic shift in our reality. He spent long hours at work, as if immersing himself in familiar routines could undo Eloise's ruinous legacy. When he was home, a brittle tension crackled between us, both skirting the emotional minefield her deceptions had laid. I understood his withdrawal, his need to compartmentalize. God knew I'd erected my own fortresses over the years to survive Eloise's psychological warfare. But even those thick-walled defenses were straining under the weight of all that had transpired. The turning point came one night over a stilted dinner of reheated leftovers. Dean set down his fork with a dull clank. This isn't working. 
I froze mid-bite, heart jackrabbiting as terrible scenarios flickered through my mind. Was this the moment our marriage finally buckled, shattered by the strain of Eloise's machinations? But when I met his gaze, I saw only weary resolution. We can't keep living like this, Corinne, tiptoeing around each other, sidestepping what happened. He exhaled a frustrated breath, raking a hand through his hair. I don't know where to start unraveling the tangled mess my mother created. But I do know shutting you out again isn't the answer. Something inside me unclenched at his words. I'm not going anywhere, I said impulsively. We'll get through this together. Dean's lips twitched in a reluctant half-smile as he reached across the table for my hand. Together. I like the sound of that. From that point, the walls between us began to gradually dismantle. In their place, an honest dialogue emerged, one founded on empathy, patience, and a mutual desire to shed Eloise's corrosive influence once and for all. Over long conversations, all the hurts and betrayals were slowly exhumed. The constant belittling, the manufactured conflicts designed to drive wedges, the insidious gaslighting that had us both questioning our reality. Laying it all bare was an excruciatingly painful process. But with each buried wound exposed and lanced, I felt lighter, more whole. Roles reversed, too, as Dean opened up with a raw vulnerability I'd never witnessed before. He spoke of being the idealized son, the golden child, who could never escape Eloise's web of demands and criticisms, despite his devotion. I think a part of me always longed for her approval, he confessed haltingly, which is why I was so blind to her cruelties, no matter who tried warning me. In turn, I divulged the bone-deep fears Eloise had awoken, of being alone and outmatched as a new mother, of tainting our child's upbringing with echoes of the dysfunction that marred my own childhood. You saved me from that, I admitted, cradling my rounded belly. Saved us both. By the time the last of our lacerations had been cleansed and bound, I felt closer to Dean than I had in years. Not simply spouses united by domesticity, but partners buckling back to back to withstand the onslaught of trauma. Our bedroom became a sanctuary again, a sacred space reclaimed from the toxic taint of Eloise's influence. Physical intimacy took on new, profound dimensions as we relearned each other's boundaries and needs. Countless tender moments stitched past wounds into a new, stronger whole. The nursery, too, was an exercise in co-creation. Dean and I labored side by side, meticulously outfitting the space with every necessity and not a single item imposed by his mother's interference. We emerged scarred, yes, but also formidably unified an immovable bulwark erected to deflect any resurgence of Eloise's malice. When our daughter arrived two months later, squalling and perfect, we were girded for the challenges ahead. Absolutely nothing would disrupt the hard-won peace of our newly reclaimed lives. As I cradled my newborn's warmth against my chest, I knew this child would never want for security, stability, love. Those insidious cycles of toxicity ended with us. Eloise's shadow no longer touched this family. We had stepped finally into the light. 